Hey guys, it's Ed here and today I'm going to show you how to do a nighttime panorama similar to the one that you can see on the screen now. The first thing you're going to want to do is take your tripod and preferably a shutter release and go out on a clear night and take six or seven photos and make sure that they have an overlap and you're going to want to have about two thirds sky and a third land and you're going to be taking them in portrait mode. Now the settings that you would set your camera to in manual mode obviously is 30 seconds. Uh, F4 or the lowest aperture that you can you can do on your camera and about ISO 1600 so here are the six photos that I was talking about you're going to initially edit them in Lightroom and then stitch them together uh, with Photoshop and then take them back to Lightroom again and produce the final result so we're going to start in Lightroom now the first thing you'll see me doing here is lowering the temperature as you can see it's very warm and this is because the camera's got the white balance wrong but you lower the temperature and fiddle with the tint until you believe uh, the sky looks how it was um, when you took the photo. So that's what I'm just doing here. Now, when you've done that, you're going to want to do my standard thing, which is to lower the highlights and up the shadows. And you'll see me doing this now. And then after you do this, you're going to want to press Alt on your computer, or I think it's Command for Mac, and move it to the right until you see a white point, and then stop. And then do the same for the black until you see a few black points, a bit more for the black. Now you see me up in exposure here, this is because I just thought the picture was a bit dark. And um, yeah, um, then you're going to want to go down a bit and increase the clarity to 100, just giving it that extra pop and you see me messing around with the saturation slider for some reason, I don't know why, but leave that alone. Then you're going to want to go down almost to the bottom where it says, uh, I think it's detail, and you're going to want to sharpen the picture a little bit and then go down to masking and press alt and move your slider along until you see just uh, the stars and uh, sort of the outline of the land. This is just um, where the sharpness is going to occur. Now you're going to want to go down even further and enable profile corrections and then enter in your uh, lens settings. Okay, so you go back up to the top. Now as you can see there's a bit of purple fringing on the side. Uh, now I was just trying to see if any of these sliders, the saturation sliders, would change that but it doesn't. But it does get sorted out later because it's a panorama so um, the left side from the other picture sort of replaces it so you don't get any of that purple vignetting around the side which is pretty horrible. So when the panorama's finished, there's going to be a little box that comes up, just press no, you don't want to do that. Uh, then you're going to use the crop tool and just do a rough crop, um, you know, including most of the photo, but leaving a little bit of the edges on show as well, because we're going to come back to it with the clone stamp tool and fill in the edges to just get a larger picture. Then you're going to want to go down to the bottom right uh, where the uh, layers are and just select all the layers and then right click and press flatten image to bring them all into one layer. Uh, now go down into the layers bar at the bottom again and double click on the single layer and press OK and then right click on it and press duplicate layer. If you go to the clone stamp tool now this is going to replicate one area and you can paint it in another. So to take that sample, um, you're going to press Alt and then paint it quite close to where you took the sample. Um, and then uh, just paint until uh, 
uh, all, all of the white is gone and just go around the picture and do the same. Now sometimes you'll come to a horizon or like a edge or something like that and they're a bit more difficult. You're going to want to press alt on the horizon um, quite close to where the white bit is and then move your mouse over and click down and just paint around and it should look okay. Now I've rushed it a bit here but that's just to show you guys. Now you see me cropping the picture in a bit and elongating the sky. Uh, that's just my preference. You don't have to do that, but I thought it works well with this picture. Okay, so when you finish, just file, save as, and in the same folder, whatever, uh, as a JPEG file. And uh, now I'm just going to go ahead and open up Lightroom, and you'll see here uh, next episode's picture actually. Well, I hope it will be next episode's. Um, now you're going to want to find the folder that your um, where you saved it as. Uh, for me, it's in Panoramas and number nine, I think, <laughs> something like that. Uh, and then select the photo, open it up, double click on it, press develop, and then we're going to start the editing. The editing. So we're going to want to bring down the highlights up the shadows, um, up the whites, and down the blacks. That's my kind of formula. Uh, it's still a bit dark, so we're going to up the exposure and the clarity as well. Um, the key thing about this photo is that to create depth in well, any photo, uh, especially in a dark photo this works, you need cool colours at the back, the furthest distance, and warm colours at the front. Um, so we're going to try and accentuate that, we're going to try and make it warmer at the front. Um, it's all very, already very warm, but if we add an ND filter to the back and make it very cool, then it's going to create depth, and that's what I'm really looking for. So Now, I add an ND filter here, and the settings that you're going to want to use on a nighttime photo are you're going to up the contrast, up the highlights for the stars to make the stars, stars brighter, and up the clarity and then also what I do is um, make it more purple with the tint so sliding it to the right this is the cool color and it creates the depth that I was talking about um, the last thing that I'm going to do to the photo is dodge and burn and dodge and burn is if you take the brush and you just lower down the exposure and you paint on areas on the photo to give it interesting lighting so you can do that for if you lower the exposure so you go around in my case the castle here well it's a castle mound actually but um, and you just paint around the edge and you just try and create interesting light and you do the same for um, for a light brush so up in the exposure and for my case I'm, I'm doing it on the stars as well um, now this is just making the stars brighter and just creating interesting light. Um, a lot of people do like the dodge and burn. Like if you sh show a photo to someone with dodge and burn, they'll say, "Oh, that looks really good." They won't be able to describe it though. But but it, it's usually because of the dodge and burn. It's because of, like the interesting lighting, the interesting texture that it gives the photo. Um, so I'm just gonna sort of fast forward through the dodge and burning, but I do do one other thing. <laughs> do do anyway <laughs> I do do one other thing is I go down to the bottom and I change the saturation now if, if I looked closely at the stars they tended to have a blue tinge to it and I found out that if you lower the blue saturation um, sl uh, slider it does get rid of it so it makes the stars white how, how they actually appeared um, now that is the end of the video. Uh, if you got this far and you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate a like or even subscribe because I'll be uh, releasing tutorials um, hopefully quite often, you know, at least once a month. Um, and I'll just leave you um, having a look at the photo, which should be in the next episode. Oh,